You know, I honestly cannot believe that something like this would actually happen. Like, after everything we went through, everything that happened with Meta basically just dying on that hill, and they do all that just to shut down Ready at Dawn. Because no, the title is not clickbait. No, that fake tweet isn't actually fake. Well, I mean, it actually is fake, but the content within it is actually real. Y'all, on August 7th, 2024, quite possibly a year after Echo VR shut down, Meta has now officially closed Ready at Dawn. Now, for those of you who may not know exactly what I'm talking about, because this issue is pretty niche, I'm going to direct you to a video that I made on the top right screen that you should be seeing it right now that'll basically give you all of the context. But anyway, now that that's out of the way, I I don't actually know all of the facts about this, so I got an article. What's up, Upload VR? Happy to see you again. Y'all never thought I was gonna make a video like this, huh? Well, let's make a blast from the past and let's actually read this. Meta confirmed to Upload VR it closed the development studio behind some of VR's best games. Ready at Dawn is no more. Meta confirmed after an article reporting the closure first appeared on Android Central, Lone Echo and Echo Arena from Rad delivered fluid zero-G gameplay in a standout single-player and multiplayer games while on the Rift and Quest headsets. Meta acquired Ready at Dawn in 2020, and Lone Echo 2 in 2021 was the last Oculus Rift exclusive. By 2023, Meta shifting priorities under CTO Andrew Bosworth saw the closure of Echo Arena, a well-loved zero-G team sport, leading to pleas from the former technical guide John Carmack and a reminder from the community of the painful loss in its closure. The closure follows layoffs last year, which also hit Onward creator Downpour Interactive, another Meta-owned studio. When canceling Echo Arena, the studio noted that they were coming together to focus on our next project. We can't say anything yet, but we are all excited and need all hands on deck. Meta's history in VR gaming shows a number of VR acquisitions, followed by more founder departures than new game announcements. Camouflage, the developer behind Iron Man VR, is aiming to wow superhero fans with Batman Arkham Shadow later this year featuring real-time shadows pressing Quest 3's graphics capabilities. Beat Games added new features and lots of DLCs to its singular title Beat Saber, since the acquisition by Meta near the end of 2019. Along with that, Supernatural's VR fitness service is a part of Meta, despite meeting opposition by the US Federal Trade Commission, and Sansru Games followed up a PC powerhouse Asgard's Wrath with Asgard's Wrath 2 on the Quest 2 and Quest 3 in, in 2023. In addition, Echo VR, Lone Echo, and Lone Echo 2 developer Ready at Dawn Studios each considered among some of VR's best games, was acquired in 2020 and is now dead as of August 2024. Pop One Studio Big Box VR moved free to play with a recent Phoenix Royale update, keeping the game fresh, and Meta also acquired Armature Studio, which brought Resident Evil 4 to the Quest 2, as well as Onward developer Downpour Interactive and Wilson's Heart developer Twisted Pixel. Meanwhile, Meta's research towards all-day AR glasses consumes tens of billions in manufacturing and investment partnerships. As Google tries to take Meta's Ray-Ban partnership and fork Android XR, Zuckerberg's $23 billion spent for WhatsApp and Oculus VR back in 2014 was merely an entry fee to get Horizon OS to where it is today with the Quest 3 as a market-leading VR headset in a still nascent space. As Zuckerberg charts out AI-generating server farms into the 2030s with glasses, wristbands, headset technologies, and more, how much money does he have left over to support Oculus Studios? And then, how much is left to fund third-party VR games on the Horizon Store? And going forward, how will Meta actually balance funding between store games and Horizon Worlds? And there you go, everyone. That's the end of that article. So, honestly, just some thoughts immediately out of my head is just really... Honestly, it's been really this article has put a lot of these things into perspective. Like, Meta has not been doing too good with the games recently. A lot of these acquisitions have not really led these studios to kind of continue innovating. As good as a lot of the games that they've made are, I don't think they can beat the pressure of a startup game that's risking everything for the highest of rewards. Let's take, for example, Gorilla Tag, one of Meta's most popular games. You'd think if that was the case, then Meta would probably want to buy another Axiom. Yet it seems that these guys, for probably a good reason, are choosing not to be acquired. But I do agree with the article in stating that a lot of this does follow the the mass layoffs that have been happening in the VR industry. I know I've been seeing a lot of growing sentiment that like, oh, VR is cooked, VR is going down, we're never gonna see VR again, it all ends here. I'm just gonna say now, that is not the case. I mean, an industry doesn't have to grow every single second. 
And because VR is the way that it is, all we're waiting for is just one gem title and, you know, maybe the release of the Quest 3S to get VR back on top with a more affordable headset that has more processing power. But still, that's really all for me. I'm not really too active on this channel anymore, so I don't really care that much if you leave a like or subscribe. But I would be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. And uh, yeah, with that said, my name is Trentic, and I will be signing out. Peace.